Hey there, this is going to be a simple draw with me sketching session. In this one, we're going to be doing some smaller thumbnail style explorations of a larger scene. Again, this is something I really like to do to get my creative juices flowing, to sort of think about ideas for illustrations. You can use these same ideas for little illustrations or big ones. It doesn't really matter. And before that, I'm going to check out some cool art that I found on the internet this morning. Let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we are all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. All right, so this is for Tuesday, the 30th of August. And I'm just checking out what's trending on ArtStation. Now, one of the first things that I saw that kind of looked cool, or again, was just sort of got me thinking, was this by uh, Pablo uh, Dominguez. And again, just some cool sort of really, you know, this sort of like photo bashy style concept art that, um, you know, just kind of had like that really cool sort of fresh blue green sort of vibe, which again, you know, reminds me of that kind of, uh, you know, sort of Zelda look. Um, people sort of adventuring in these fantasy environments. I thought this was really cool. Um, and I'll link all of these in the description below if you want to sort of check them out. Um, but yeah, I thought this was really cool because again, it, it speaks to what I'm often sort of really interested in, which is sort of people exploring these large sort of fantasy environments. But yeah, super cool to see. Again, totally different technique to what I would sort of normally use. But again, um, really, really cool imagery. Second thing was, again, something sort of similar. This one by uh, Tuivu um, Hutaninska. And uh, again, apologies, my, my pronunciation of the names is um, lacking. But again, I thought this was really cool. And one of the best things about ArtStation is you just get to see stuff really big. And people do often, you know, post sort of process stuff, which is really cool to see. So you can kind of not just see the art, you can see it big and high res, but you can kind of see, you know, like a lot of the, the development process. A lot of this is really cool. So you can see, again, there's like awesome sort of 3D base. Um, and uh, yeah, sort of uh, nice sort of, um, you know, way that that's been created. Again, um, I understand how this is sort of done. It's, it's not something that I normally do, but I thought just the idea of, again, something that kind of feels very sort of organic, but also it feels like, you know, some of these rock structures were maybe kind of made by some kind of, you know, um, sort of conscious being or something. So it's like an interesting mix of stuff that feels sort of organic, but also has this kind of weird, weird otherworldly look and just sort of super epic scale. So yeah, I really sort of thought that that was sort of cool. And the other thing I saw that was really, really fun was uh, uh, Ming Chen Chen, who um, is just, yeah, an amazing sort of art director at West Studio. And just these images, also a really cool process um, here, which is really, really useful to see. Again, especially because even though the result is painted, um, a lot of these kind of seem to start with uh, a line drawing of some kind um, as a base, which again is, is worth noting again, because you know drawing is always an important part of many people's processes. Um, but yeah, I thought these were really, really cool. Again, great sense of sort of painting, but sort of drama that has that awesome sort of in your face, wide angle lens, um, sort of, you know, keyframe art look, which is really cool. But yeah, these are just sort of awesome, um, totally next level ability to render and simplify. You know, you can see how efficient a lot of these brush strokes are. Um, super, super inspiring. And again, also really, really cool narrative ideas, which um, is always really good to see. Something that always, again, sort of gets me thinking about drawing my own scenes and, you know, coming up with ideas and stuff like that. So again, super, super high level um, rendering, right? Um, and again, it's always one of these things where, um, you know, people who have spent a lot of time on their foundation are just able to get so much out of so little in terms of brush economy and 
um, you know, just being able to kind of create these things and make it sort of look, uh, you know, even though I'm sure it's not, make it look kind of easy and exciting and fun. So again, I thought those were really, really cool. The next thing that I saw was this thing, which seemed to be all over the front page of ArtStation um, today, which is this thing called Project Breach, um, which most of these things are being posted by Yi Yang. And um, yeah, um, I, but I think there's a large sort of group of people who are working on these, so I'm not quite sure who is making them specifically. But yeah, I have no idea what this thing is, but it looks freaking awesome. Um, and uh, again, just a really, really good example of narrative sort of concept design and keyframe illustration where, you know, you can kind of feel that this like, you know, either is a game or is going to be a game or should be a game or an animation or something. Um, and again, really sort of strong visual design and interesting sort of aesthetic that just feels really strong. You know, it's sort of all over um, all of these sort of keyframe illustrations, just really sort of cool ideas for, you know, the robots themselves, um, the, you know, sort of, you know, the overall sort of art direction in terms of lighting and, um, and also a lot of the ideas of, you know, the special effects and you know, what they're sort of up against and stuff. So there's a whole bunch of this there that, um, again, uh, I'll put a link to all these sort of pages that I'm um, sort of showing, but uh, there's a lot more on, on their page that's well worth sort of checking out. So again, I thought these were super cool, super cool ideas. And again, um, just one of those things that, again, always just reminds me how important the story is, right? There's a real sense that like something consistent is sort of going on. And again, it has a really sort of cool vibe. So again, you know, check this out. Lots and lots of cool other sort of pages there. No idea what this project is, but it looks freaking awesome. There's a few more here. Again, just sort of cool ideas. I like the color palette. Again, those kind of like soft greeny blues. And again, this sort of idea of some weird sort of phenomena going on and um, yeah just really really strong imagery um, yeah totally 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 into it and makes me want to draw some cool narrative based illustration here's a few more again just really really cool weird sort of uh, again phenomena and again you know just figuring that stuff out and being able to sort of replicate it and show it from you know different um, vantage points is is super useful this is often you know so much of what concept art is about you know it, it's not just about um, you know designing static characters it's about sort of doing that and then putting it all together and doing you know sort of look dev and visual development on you know what those special effects uh, are going to be like putting it all together and then you can kind of see like wow you know that does look like something that's a little bit unique um and that allows everyone to sort of get behind that project and, and get really excited about it so again no idea what it is again but it looks it looks cool anyway that's all for today just uh super super cool stuff but uh anyway i'm sort of keen to do some sketching so let's jump over to the drawing table. All right, here we are at the drawing table. What I'm going to be using today are some black wing matte pencils. I have a kneadable eraser and I'm drawing on this 400 series Strathmore smooth surface drawing paper, uh, which again is uh, sort of like 130 GSM, something like that. Pretty decent paper. It's kind of smooth, which sometimes works for this, sometimes sometimes not as much. But let's play around and see how we go. All right, someone is lawn mowing and chainsawing in the background next door, so hopefully that doesn't upset us too much from an audio perspective. Normally, I create things in the line and color style, but this is going to be dealing with the thumbnail process specifically. If you want some more information about the line and color style and process, you can check out my free quick start guide. It goes over my advice for how to get up and running quickly in Photoshop, and I go over all of my advice from going from the thumbnail to the finished image, and you get all of the brushes, PSDs, etc., that I use day to day as a working artist. It's free, the link will be in the description. Go check it out. So, I'm going to be using um, again these sort of characters here my sort of lizard cat style creature. 
And again, the thing is that, it, you know, I, I really like all of that science fiction work, you know, um, and often my natural inclination is to, you know, try and create a whole bunch of cool sort of sci-fi art, which again, you know, sometimes I, I will do, but again, um, you know, I, I find that the best thing to do in, especially if we're just sketching, you know, and you're just kind of having fun, um, which again is what these sessions are all about. The, the most important thing is to just kind of do the things that you would normally do, but maybe, you know, try and, you know, add one or two little elements from the work that you've seen and see if you can, you know, use that to, you know, inspire you or, you know, do something sort of different. So again, I like the idea of, you know, big sort of monolithic environments and, um, traversing those environments, right? Basic narrative storytelling, um, talking about the journey. And again, this is a trope that, you know, I frequently sort of use and play around with. So that's really what I'm going to do here. Talk about, you know, what we can do in terms of, you know, placing this sort of character. Um, got this, we'll, and we'll sort of draw them in a sec, right? This kind of little Bom. Bom. and again, so it's kind of like part lizard, part dragon, part sort of cat or something, like a weird sort of mix. And again, I'm doing a lot of sort of draw through, a lot of playing around with these kind of different shapes I am tracing to the ground plane Boom. and again let's draw down that height from the ground plane let's draw across All right and then let's think about putting in right our little sort of character here so I've got torso bump bump Right, got a sword here, a pack or something like that. So again, playing around with this simple idea. And I often find it's good to, you know, start out by, you know, either designing something, you know, spend the time to kind of really think about what you are going to draw. And yeah, try and sort of place these things in their sort of environment, right? Like think about where they're going to go. Now I have another video that sort of goes over this basic concept in a little bit more detail if you want some of the sort of technical advice for um, thinking about the ground plane, right? Thinking about those sort of concepts. But again, what I want to do here is just sort of sketch around and, and talk about how we can, you know, actually sort of implement this and, you know, think about putting it into a little bit more of an interesting composition. So, again, to that end, there's probably two different ways you can go about this. Um, you know, one would be to, you know, just sort of start drawing the scene, right? So in this case, I might, you know, I like the idea of them kind of walking through some sort of valley or something like that, where, again, there are these big monolithic sort of structures that feel as if they were, you know, maybe built or designed a long long time ago right again playing maybe with the idea of there being some kind of entrance or something like that and you know if you're exploring these ideas for for images it, it's really important that you you know approach it in a couple of ways i think that the first is to Again, you know, just be free to explore, right? Think a little bit more in terms of um, how, right? Like just what what is going on and, and thinking more in terms of just figuring it out in your own mind. Once you get good at or better at drawing things from different angles, um, you know, you can sort of experiment with different angles. But it all kind of starts with the basic idea of just understanding like for yourself what 
is going to be there, right? Like what what is going to be there? And once you do that, then it's more a matter of how do you kind of position the camera, right? Like how do we how do we think about this from like more of a directorial um, point of view? So again, we, you know, if we sort of think about there's some perspective there, right? Boom, boom. Right, I've got this sort of weird character, right? And again, we could sort of put the, we could put that guy right up there, right? Like he's sort of riding, or we could put him down there. And these are just sort of ideas. But in this case, right? Just trying to do the most basic idea, which is to frame, right? Frame the image, frame the concept. Maybe have that kind of broken down in the background there. Boom. And yeah, just get in there and and think about like what's happening, what's what's going on. How can I make this interesting? How can I you know put some interplay between the the background and, and the environment, etc., etc. Um, so this, I, I feel like, would is, is more of like sort of a, a desolate um, environment here, right? Again, maybe we can sort of repeat those shapes. One of the main things that would you know would make a um, you know like an environment or something like that feel constructed is is that comp is that idea of sort of repetition of shapes right like this this same thing that was built over here right is being built over there so i think that's like a really sort of effective way to kind of do it now often again when i'm sort of coming up with different ideas for this i start with the basic concept of just let's you know let's do the basics right um again sorry redundant redundant speech but the first thing to do is just kind of put the characters where we need them to be and just sort of see like okay like what happens what what are the what are the typical things that are tending to to kind of happen with the character what are some things we could sort of pay attention to that you know work from a shape design aspect or you know um, things that are very easy for these characters and the this environment to do and you know which things are maybe a little bit more sort of challenging, right? What's going to happen easily? What's going to happen automatically? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, then I'll just sort of experiment. So, again, in this case, uh, I've got very, you know, simple. I've got like a low horizon line. Um, again, I've got some sort of sense of perspective here. I've got some building in the background. All right? Maybe some other buildings in the background again that are kind of fallen down and again could you just get some sense of scale similar stuff happening in in the foreground now in this case uh you know I I don't really have you know, a frame in mind. I'm just kind of like sketching around, and and I, I you know, I, I do find this is a really good way to start these kind of um, exploration processes, right? Don't don't try and sort of compose. Just sort of tell the story. You know, just jump in there, tell the story, see what happens, um, and uh, yeah, you know, if it if it turns out well, it turns out well. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, you know, who knows. And yeah, so again, just trying to frame the character. In this case, uh, you know, we're starting with the with the primary read, right? Um, so in this case, I've got my sort of primary read, and then um, you know, the the main idea was to kind of have these as the secondary read, and then these would be my 
sort of tertiary read. I'm not quite sure whether that is sort of happening, but maybe just, you know, you know, again again having that kind of repeated shape. Right, something that kind of feels like a doorway. Maybe we could make that a little bit more kind of obvious or something like that. Again, play around with it, but um, you know, again, that's just the idea, right? That's not necessarily what's always going to happen, and this is just the first kind of ideation pass. And again, what you can do then is, you know, think about well, maybe we could, you know, frame this, right? Let's uh, let's put a box around it, right? If you frame something, uh, either literally or figuratively, it sort of becomes art right becomes a contained picture plane as opposed to you know just kind of a mess and so you know i i would say this process is is this is sort of like one step on you know the the road to developing a good image um just sort of starting to internally map out what is likely to work what's likely not to work and again you know think about you know, can, can we make this interesting can we make this um, can we make this some way unique? Again, not quite sure about, you know, what what exactly is sort of going on there. Uh, I sort of feel like, again, maybe, and again, this could just be a matter of, you know, look, we've got, we've got some paper that will allow us to erase. I could maybe experiment here, or I could you know, do do another one. Yeah, playing around with some idea of there being an entrance or some some sort of destination, and we can kind of mark out that path along the way right think a little bit more carefully about about the perspective right about some other bits and pieces again a good way to kind of make it really clear would be to put a character or something there right that 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 would make it kind of super clear that this is something we need to kind of pay attention to but again, you know, that's that's sort of the, the general idea of how I would sort of explore this. Um, and yeah, it's just a matter of sort of, you know, moving and playing around with extra, you know, camera angles and stuff. Um, but yeah, I do like that process of, you know, just sort of starting and messing around. If, uh, you know, if we're not starting that way, you know, if you, if you do have a frame in mind, again, um, it's just a matter of sort of blocking out what is important. And normally, again, I'm going to start with the sort of primary read, right? Like, what is the what is the most important thing here? Now, when I'm constructing this, I've got again there's sort of like two spherical sort of shapes there. And I've got essentially different sort of shoulder hip joints. Right. And then I've just sort of got this center line, right? Which kind of creates this shape like this. Now, you know, one of the things I want to try and play around with doing is answering a, a couple of sort of questions and things that come up on the channel, um, you know, during the week. I thought there was one that was sort of interesting that came up and it sort of relates to this because the question was, on the video that I made talking about building your art progress engine. So on, you know, really sort of thinking about, okay, how, how do you actually improve? I, I talked about the idea of a loop, right? And the feeling that we need to kind of finish things, right? And the question was, well, how does that kind of relate to the idea of detail or quality versus quantity. So, you know, I, I think it's been, you know, fairly well 
documented that, that often one of the best strategies to, to deal with this is to deal with improvement is sort of quantity, right? So just like do stuff and do, do a lot of it and um, you know you sort of get better and it's sort of often more important to do more stuff than it is to you know sit there trying to get it right the first time so how does the concept of finishing things play into that because obviously like a big part of that sort of challenge is is saying hey you know finish things and make sure that they are as as good as you can do right now the thing there is that it's just a matter of understanding for yourself what you consider to be finished so you know what someone else would consider to be finished um, is irrelevant and it doesn't necessarily mean sort of like polish right so yes right yes finish not polished so you know I could say hey you know I'm going to you know do some sketching today and my unit of finish is I'm going to fill up one page with sketches. Now, do they have to be good? No, right? Because again, the goal is to just come up with sketches. <laughs> um, I could say I'm going to do three little, you know, thumbnail story ideas um, per, you know, day or whatever. So the, the goal there is that it, it's mainly the, the most important thing is that I'm sort of saying, hey, this is my outcome. Uh, this is what I'm trying for and if I complete it then it's finished so you know could these be better from a compositional standpoint from a finish standpoint yeah they could all be better but given the amount of time I gave myself right like this is you know this is the best I could do and that's kind of fine and it's just a matter of you know understanding that for yourself right understanding you know where your uh, you know sense of finish is and what that means for you so it could just be a sketch page it, it could be you know any of these things that that sort of side of it doesn't doesn't really doesn't really matter so again in this instance um yeah not sure. let's take some of that back see if we can again see if build a little bit more of this sort of structure feel like that turn of the head is not really sort of working right get this it's got sort of six eyes this weird lizard guy um. So again, playing with those, playing with those kind of feet as an idea. I'm just going to sort of take that back and see if I can sort of block out this structure a little bit more, right? Well, okay, got one thing there. Well, and I reckon, yeah, that that foot can go all the way back. And this one, maybe it's back here a little bit more. All right, so sort of going down. Again, perspective not not really kind of working to kind of show the the fact that we're kind of going down. So yeah, let's see if I can get that downward sort of feeling there. So again, can just be good to kind of, you know, sketch that out from a, you know, more like a gestural point of view. Let's not worry too much about. Um, you know, getting the structure 100% right. Let's maybe just sort of focus on Right, getting that to kind of feel feel right. Right, boom. Right, and again, maybe it could be kind of going 
with a nice little curve or something like that. Again, if we were, so wh what's happening here? Well, I feel like there's some sort of ground plane going on here. Well, and this is the character kind of walking down into it. So it has some foreground rocks here. Again, I'm often just using the same sort of pretty standard, um, you know, props. I often talk about this. Think about yourself as a director. You have a room or warehouse full of props. You don't have all the props because, you know, maybe your visual library isn't there yet. Doesn't matter. Just pick the ones you have and try and make a movie out of those as opposed to trying to, you know, be perfect with, um, you know, your visual library, right? Having to draw everything. Little seat saddle thing. Right. Boom. And again, would be good to kind of get a feel of that sort of structure here. And the, the more of these you do, the, you know, the more you understand your character, the more you understand, you know, all, all of the stuff that's going on. Um, so let's get this one. Right, that leg is going, going back, right, this one. Bump, bump. Going there, so dealing with super, you know, super little, small, sketchy marks, but you know, figuring these out at this stage, uh, you know, helps a lot. And uh, you know, it it's can be worth you know doing a few passes with this, All right? So again, let's put that one, bump, bump, it's like this. We could just start with a sharper pencil. So again, this one is, um, you know, turning into a little bit more of an exploration of, you know, the form or, you know, like what it might, what it might look like if these sort of characters were traversing a, you know, particular sort of, you know, environment that, again, is a little bit trickier from a perspective standpoint. Um, but still, I think... should work okay All right let's clean this up a bit right, boom some things saddle bags around the back got the seat here saddle thing here again this is just my complete made up nonsense saddle so you find with this type of drawing paper, again, you know, you, you can redraw it on it, you know, you can sort of hack around, but there is a limit to it, right? Um, at some point, you know, it, it'll start to look a bit sort of garbage, right? Let's put a spear in this guy's hand. Again, not quite sure what the right angle for that would be. Bump, 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 bump. Right, just sort of looking there. And um, again, you know, figuring out all these things, uh, you know, uh, th these are all bits and pieces I can certainly do in the, in the final image. Often what I'm trying to do here, though, is, you know, is make sure that, you know, I can get, you know, the basics happening here. Um... Again, just trying to define those sort of shapes, right? Like, what are those silhouettes likely to be? Um, let's try and place some sort of rocks underneath there. So again, I'm just taking that back so it's not as sort of strong. But uh, yeah, so what's happening here essentially is kind of if you know you think about here's a, here's a ground plane over here. I'm going to have some thing on there. Right, and sort of what we have is sort of a, a slope going down. Right, so it's kind of like a slope going down, and that's where, right, the character is is kind of going. And so again, it's a little bit of a trickier 
environmental situation. Again, I think what these will be are some kind of statue things, right? Sort of spheres, maybe they can have some sort of writing or something on them. That way, again, we can sort of play with depth. So again, just sort of silly fantasy ideas, right? You know, like what's what's going on here? Okay, we'll see if we can tell that story of there being like a, right, like more like a ramp down. over there. So again, you know, probably don't need much more than that to kind of explore this basic concept. And again, they can sort of be covered with dust. Right, let's carry through some of these concepts here. Right, see if we can get some big overlapping shapes. So we got our character overlapping Right, selling that idea. Again, we could put a bit of tone in here. Help kind of sell what that is the foreground. So again, you know, th there's a lot of sort of drawing stuff that would need to be, you know, sort of properly figured out here. That's not really sort of figured out. Uh, let's make sure that the I'm not sure exactly where that would be. Let's put in the shadow underneath there. Yeah, that's kind of... I feel like there's sort of something there that, that might kind of work. And... Yeah, a few things kind of hanging down there. Um... And yeah, it depends how you know finished you want you want to make these, right? You know, we we could we could spend a lot of time on these, and and that can be useful because sometimes if you know you get a little you know sketch or something like that for an environment, and you know it kind of works, then bang, you know you just basically take that thing into you know the the finish, and it, it kind of works, you know. Um, other times, again, you know, it can be worthwhile just kind of leaving it, iterating, because, you know, then you kind of leave some of your um, other ideas a little bit more resolved, um, a little bit more sort of unresolved, but they're kind of there, so you can check them, right? You can kind of, um, yeah, you can kind of make sure that you've always got those ideas that you sort of didn't use. So th there's benefits to, to all of these different sort of techniques, right? The idea of, you know, just leaving something there or, you know, whatever. Um, hacking it, making sure it, you know, gets finished, making sure it gets sort of polished. There's no right or wrong to any of those ideas. And again, you know, next step would be, let's try it from a different angle. Let's, you know, let's go down there. Let's see what that, right, what that next step would be. But for now, I think we can kind of, you know, leave that where it is. So again, in, in this case, it's like probably, you know, one of the challenges would be, you know, making this interesting enough, right? Like putting enough sort of contrast on here, right? So we really, from a dramatic point, we're actually sort of drawn, right? We're drawn here, right? And, and making this feel a little bit more interesting or, you know, like there's something something down there, right? Again, I'm doing a, putting a character down there is like the obvious thing, but kind of don't sort of need to do that. Um, but yeah, again, you know, this one probably, you know, works just as well. Um, this is kind of playing around a little bit more with just showing how we can frame those ideas, you know, and, and you know, sort of think about it a little bit before we 
we dive in. Um, but yeah, and, and again, in terms of like, you know, finding sort of finish with these or, you know, like how do I know when it's done or, or not done or, or whatever, um, you know, it, it's normally a matter of do a certain amount, you know, it's sort of done when I've done, you know, 20 or 10 or, or whatever it is. And, you know, once I've sort of done that many, then, uh, you know, even if they're crap, <laughs> that's fine, right? They're kind of finished, you know, that's, that's the whole point of it, right? You know, it's, it's not a matter, not a matter of like, well, did I get a good one? It's just a matter of like, hey, you know, I, I finished them, I, I did this many, and then I can sort of post them up to the internet and, you know, people can be like, well, that's not very good, you know, um, but at least then I know, hey, uh, you know, I tried, um, you know, I've got like a little sort of composition that kind of might work playing around with different um, sort of fantasy ideas and sort of concepts. Again, might be cool if some of these are kind of hacked out or, you know, have some decay or something like that in them. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's that's all we would do in, in this instance is just, you know, rinse and repeat, keep doing a bunch more. Fortunately, I don't have time today to sort of like keep drawing, but yeah, normally, you know, I'll, I'll sort of do this for, yeah, you know, maybe sort of an hour or, or two hours and just kind of like see what happens. Uh, yeah, and you know, then you've got a collection of bits and pieces that you can go back to, bits and pieces of images that, you know, you can use and, um, you know, you can always sort of go back to that idea because it's sort of captured as as an image. So it's something that, yeah, I feel like uh, has has a pretty high utility. It's just being able to do little kind of thumbnails like this and, yeah, just experiment with, with story ideas. And uh, as I said, with everything, right, the more you kind of sit there and finesse it and, you know, polish it, the, the you know, the more you might find that you sort of ruin it. <laughs> um, in which case, again, you know, you've got to sort of start again. Or you might just find that, yeah, you know, adding a little bit extra of that stuff, you know, sort of helps to, to frame the idea. Again, I never really sort of know when to stop. But I think that's it for today's sketch with me. Hopefully this one's been interesting. Let me know if you've got any questions or comments below. And we'll see you in the next video. Happy drawing.